Hello there! In this tutorial, we are going to create a space shooter in Godot. And while making the game, I'm going to explain Godot from scratch, so you don't have to have any previous knowledge. Although, before that, let's cover some basics. Most importantly, Godot is a game engine, and it is somewhat similar compared to other game engines like Unity, Unreal, or Game Maker. They all ultimately work in the same way, in the sense that they are giving you the tools to make games. This would include creating graphics, getting input, playing sounds, covering physics, exporting the game, things like that. If you combine all of these things, you hopefully get a game out of it at the end. The really nice thing about Godot is that it is completely free, community developed and open source, which means there's no chance of anybody raising the prices like for Unity for example. And since it's free, it's also really easy to get started, which is why it's becoming so popular recently. Let's install it right away. The website you want to go to is called godotengine.org. And on there, you can see it right away, you want to click on download latest to get Godot version 4.2. Now this version is super recent. As a matter of fact, it came out while I was making this tutorial. So for the videos, I am going to work in Godot 4.1.3, but it really doesn't matter. The differences are much more advanced and are not going to affect this tutorial whatsoever. So simply click on download latest, and then you should be getting this page, where Godot gives you the right version for your operating system. Godot is available for all the major ones, so Windows, Mac OS, and Linux are supported. If you go down, you can see a few more versions, but this shouldn't be relevant. All you want to do is click on Godot Engine, and then you're getting a download page. And once that is done, you can close the browser, and now in your downloads folder, you should have a zip file that you can extract. After you're doing that, you are getting a folder with two files. If you double click on that one, you get the project manager. And in there, right now, we don't have any projects. So Godot is trying to open an asset library, but we don't want that. So click on console. Now this at the moment is entirely empty, but later on, once you have a few projects, they would show up in here. But at the moment, we don't have any of that. So I want to create a new project. And now we are getting a couple of options. Most importantly, we need a name for our game. I want to call it Space Shooter. After that, we have to create a project folder. I am going to do that in my documents folder, but if you have your own setup, just use that. Also the files you downloaded for Godot, you probably also want to store somewhere outside of your downloads folder. But anyway, once you have your setup, you want to click on create folder. And then Godot is giving you a tick and that's a good sign. After that, we have to choose a renderer, and there we can choose between Forward Plus, Mobile, and Compatibility. I would recommend to choose Forward Plus, although for our basic game, the differences really do not matter. They do start to become important when you get to 3D, but that's not what we are going to do, so choose whatever. And after you've done that, go to Create and Edit. Then Godot is going to load for a second, and after that, we can see the Godot editor. Now, I am going to explain all of this in detail in just a bit, but before we get to that, I want to make a few changes, and that happens under Editor and Editor Settings. Specifically, under Theme, you can get a custom color. I do not like the default bluish color, and Breeze Dark I personally find significantly better. It takes a few seconds to load, but after that, you get much more neutral gray colors. Although the choice here is fairly personal, if you want to have a light theme, that would also be in there. On top of that, in the editor, there is display scale. 150% is the default one. Although in my case, I'm going to use a custom scale of 250% or 2.5. In your case, this probably isn't necessary, but some people are watching this on a smartphone and it's gonna be really hard to see if everything is so small. But if you have vision issues, this would be a good way to get started. So with all of that, I want to save and restart. And then things should be much more visible, even on the small screen. All right, now with that out of the way, we can talk about the core of Godot, and that would be nodes and scenes. Nodes are the most basic building block that you can have in Godot. Those would be images, sounds, timers, animations, text, and there's a lot more what you can do here. Godot has a few hundred nodes, and every single one has one specific purpose. We are going to work with quite a few over this tutorial. The main thing you have to understand is that you have to combine nodes to create parts of your game. For example, our player is going to look something like this at the end, where we start with a parent node. 
This one would cover the physics part, so the collisions most importantly. After that, we have a sprite 2D. And this would simply be an image, so the image of the spaceship. After that, we have a collision polygon 2D, and this would be the collision shape. After that, we have a timer for the laser, we have a laser start position, and we have a couple of audio files. All of these combined are going to create the player ship. We are going to start with that very soon, but first of all, we also have to cover scenes. And those do two things. They organize and display nodes. For the first part, scenes organize nodes by basically being a folder for the node. And you can place a scene with nodes into another scene. This would look something like this. This is going to be the main setup of our game, where we, for example, have the player, we have the lasers, we have the meteors, we have a couple of boundaries, and we have the UI. Those are the main parts of the game. What is really important to understand is that this player is simply the entirety of all of these nodes in one scene and then placed into another scene. So the way you have to think about it is that all of this level is one scene and then this player is another scene that happens to be inside of the parent scene. But inside of the parent scene, the player is simply going to be another node that you can very easily work with. That way, Godot makes it fairly simple to create really complex scenes, for example, for the player, and then insert them into another scene and not really worry about the complexity. Makes it really easy to organize your game. Besides that, scenes also display visual nodes. For example, if you have a sprite 2D, i.e. an image, then this one is going to be displayed via a scene. And that's basically it. If you understand these concepts, you already have a good start with Godot. So let's do some practice. Here we are back in Godot. And at the moment, the main thing you see in the middle is a 3D scene. Also at the top, you can see we have 3D selected, which isn't what we want. We want to have a 2D scene. And there you can see we have a 2D scene. Also, you can move around. If you hold the middle mouse button and move the mouse, you are moving the entire scene. And with the scroll wheel, you can go in and out. And that's basically all you need to move around in a 2D space. There isn't that much to it. Also, if you look at the top, there we have script, and this would contain our scripts later on. But for now, don't worry too much about it. All we need is 2D. So this would be an empty scene at the moment. There literally isn't anything in it. To change that, you want to look on the left side. There we can create a root node. And as a reminder, we always place a node into a scene. At the moment, we can select a 2D scene, a 3D scene, a user interface, or another node. If you click on our node, then you can see all of the available nodes inside of Godot. And there are quite a few. If you extend node2D, and there are a few more things you can extend, then you can see all of the available nodes that we could create. For example, there we would have a path, we could have a line, we can have some particles, we can have lots of different things. There's also static body 2D, character body 2D, basically physics bodies. But none of that is too important right now. So I'm going to close this dialog. And instead, I want to create a 2D scene. So if I click on that, we have a node 2D. This would be a very basic node. And if you want to learn more about the node you have selected, you want to look on the right. There we have the inspector. This one gives you all of the attributes of this particular node. For example, for this node 2D, we have a transform tab, where we have position, rotation, scale, and skew. And if you look at the scene, there we have this red cross dot thingy. This is the node 2D. It doesn't have a texture, so we can't really see what's going on. But if I update the position, you can see that this cross is moving. So we are indeed updating the position. Although this isn't what I actually want to do. So let's then do all of that. Instead, what I want to do is to actually add a sprite 2D to this node. That way we can see something. For that, you either want to click on this plus symbol or press Ctrl A on the keyboard. In either case, you're going to get a create new node dialog. And there you can attach any kind of node to the current node you have selected. And since there are so many nodes, usually what you do is you use the search function. In my case, I want to get a sprite 2D. 
If I now press enter, we have added another node to the scene. And this Sprite2D is a child of Node2D, meaning whenever we are moving or rotating Node2D, i.e. the parent, we are also applying all of that to the child Sprite2D. And now, if you look on the right, in the inspector, we have quite a few more things that we could be working with. Most importantly, we now have a texture. If you click on that, you get quite a few options, but most of these you don't really care about. What is a much better way to work with this is simply looking on the bottom left, there we have the file system. At the moment, we only have a single file, the icon.svg of Godot. This you can simply drag into the texture slot and it's already highlighted. If you now drag it in there, you can see we have the Godot logo. And now if you go to transform, you can see we have the same attributes again. And if I now change them, we actually can see something going on. So that feels significantly better. Once again though, this is not what I actually want to do. As a matter of fact, let's get rid of the Sprite 2D and now we are back to a simple Node 2D. Since we want to make a game, we need to have a couple of art assets. Now in your case, you will have to download a folder and you can find the link to that in the description. In my case, I already did that. And what you get is a Space Shooter Assets folder where we have audio and graphics. To import those into Godot, you can simply drag and drop them straight in there. And then you have the graphics folder with all of the contents. The same thing I want to do for audio and make sure that you do this properly. So right now by accident, I put the audio folder inside of graphics. To change that, simply drag and drop the audio folder onto rest, then Godot is going to think for a second. And now we have an audio and a graphics folder. Audio is not too important for now, graphics is much more interesting. And there, for example, we have a couple of ships and you could select one of them. Doesn't really matter which one you choose. But for all of them, we have to go back to Node 2D, then press Ctrl A and select a Sprite 2D once again. I want to add one of the player ships. I'm going to use player ship one red. I think that's a pretty good default choice. If I drag this one over, we have a basic spaceship. Also what you can do is to rename the nodes. For example, this shouldn't be a node 2D. Let's call this one the player instead. You could also rename the sprite 2D. If you double click on it, let's rename this one to player image. And by the way, in Godot, when you are giving nodes a name, you are usually using Pascal case, i.e. there's no space between the words and every word starts with an uppercase letter. Although all of that is just convention, you could name them whatever you want. Cool. With that, we have one scene that contains two nodes, a node 2D and a sprite 2D. All of this I now want to save. And for that, you can press Ctrl and S, or you could go to scene and then save scene. In either case, you're going to end up with a save scene as dialogue. And I want to create a new folder that I'm going to call scenes. In there, I want to have a player.tscn file. That is the file ending for a scene. So click on save. And now we have a player scene with a couple of nodes. What we can do next up is click on the plus next to the player. This would create a whole new scene. And if I zoom in, you can see that the blue border around it is the size of the window. That's gonna become important in just a bit. For now though, I want to create another 2D scene. And this I'm going to rename right away to level. Also, I'm going to save it by pressing Ctrl and S and this should be level.tscn. Godot always picks the name of the first node as the name of the scene. So level is what we also get in here. Cool, with that, we have two scenes for level and the player. What I now want to do is to insert the player node into the level. And for that, besides the plus icon, you have a link kind of icon. If you click on that or press Control Shift and A, then you can see the available scenes that we have created. At the moment, this is player and level. And I want to add the player to the level. And there you can see, we have the player inside of the level. And by the way, you can move it wherever you want it to be. If you look on the left at the scene tree, you can see this symbol. This is telling you that this node is a scene created by the user. If you click on it, 
you get back to the scene where we can work with all of this in detail. And well, that is one of the most basic things you have to understand in Godot. That you have a scene with nodes and then you can put one scene inside of another scene and that scene would become basically just another node that is much more complex. But you can still add other nodes. For example, with the level selected, I can add another sprite to D and this I could rename to, let's call it BG. And this BG is going to be the background. For that, I want to minimize the ship folder and instead look at other. There we have the BG. This BG, I want to drag into the texture of this new sprite 2D. And now we have the background. And this we have to rearrange a bit to cover the entirety of the window, something like this. And well, now we have a background. Although you might have noticed that the player isn't visible anymore. And that is because of the order of these nodes. Basically, the further down a node is, the later it is drawn. Meaning at the moment, we are drawing the player and then we are drawing the background. As a consequence, the background is on top of the player and the player is not visible anymore. To change that, all you really have to do is drag the background before the player has been drawn and now we can see the player again. Perfect. And that is basically all I wanted to cover for the basics of Godot. Let's do an exercise to make sure you have understood. I want you guys to create a meteor scene and place it anywhere inside of the level scene. The graphics for the meteor you can find in the graphics folder. There are quite a few textures, just select one of them, doesn't really matter. Pause the video now and see how far you get. Alrighty, back in Godot. I first of all want to create a new scene. And the parent node for this one is going to be a 2D node or a node 2D which I want to rename right away to Meteor. After that, I am going to click on the plus symbol and add a Sprite 2D. This Sprite 2D now has a texture and for this texture, I want to go to Meteors and there we can select one of them. I'm going to go with the first one, although it really doesn't matter. And if I do that, we have a Meteor inside of the scene. After we have that, I want to save the entire scene as meteor.tsen, click on save, and now we have a meteor scene. This I want to place into the level. And for that, I want to click on the chain symbol and then add meteor.tsen. And now you might have noticed that the meteor is a child of the player, which is not what I intended. And as a consequence of that, the meteor is on top of the player. Now, I could simply move the meteor away from that, which would be a good start. But now look at what happens if I move the player around. The meteor moves along with the player. And that happens because the meteor is a child of the player. Whatever changes we make to the player would also be applied to the meteor. For example, if we go to transform and rotate the player, we are also rotating the meteor. The same would apply to the scale and to the position. Also skew, but I don't think anybody ever really uses skew. Anyway, I don't want to do any of those things, so let me reset all of them. To fix that, basically all we have to do is add the meteor as a child to the level. Which you can do by simply dragging it on top of the level, and then the meteor is independent from the player. Or rather, the meteor is a sibling of the player, so they wouldn't influence each other whatsoever which is a much better behavior. But anyway, with that, we have the most basic part of Godot. Next up, we can work on some basic movement. 